but I don't think it is an employee's right to dictate to their employer whether or not they want to work from home. You know, I mean, what ha, ultimately it's a material change in contract. And how is somebody saying that you know what I now fancy working from home and you've got to let me? It's really no different to saying you know what I don't uh, I don't want to earn forty grand a year anymore. I think you should pay me fifty. Mm-hmm. Start that paying me fifty. One of my topics actually. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> in the same way that you know. How could I turn around to an employer and go, I don't fancy paying you 50 anymore, I'm going to start paying you 40. I think mean, it, it just, if you <laughs> want- have another lawsuit <laughs> on <Yeah>. your door. <laughs> Hey guys, Matt Haycox here and welcome to the first for a long time episode of my weekly roundup. But you've not just got me today, you've got Louisa, I've not done these for a while. Uh, Whenever I used to do them and just kind of talk about the week that we've had, uh, which was normally my problems, someone suing me, someone fighting with me and uh, and everything in between, they were always one of my most popular pieces of content, but they were quite time consuming to keep up with. So I got lazy and stopped doing them and time just run away with itself. But I'm going to do it again now. I've also had a lot of requests or lot of comments from people saying, you know, why don't you try a more panel related podcast where you've got, uh, you know, where you're interacting with somebody else. So that's why Louise has been co-opted as a co-host. So we're going to give it a whirl, see what you like. As always, send me a, send me a message, send me an email and tell me what you like and don't like, but don't, don't worry, Louisa, relax, breathe deep, drink water. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. You know what I thought we'd talk about first is because it's topical to my newsletter as well today because um, in my newsletter we were talk- I was talking about how I'm back to, back to Dubai and uh, you know the, the environment of being here is just for my life so much happier with you know, social circumstances food, exercise, work and everything else and obviously you've, you've just moved here I have. You have mm-hmm. about a week ago, and I think you're know, moving to another country. I mean, even moving to another town, moving to another job, is something that people always. I mean, I, 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 I would say overthink and over worry about. They probably say I was, just, I was just flippant about it and, <laughs> and, and, and made the move. But I do think it's something that uh, you know that does get. Uh, I don't know. Just get it gets put on a pedestal of something that's uh, that's so difficult to do. But I mean, how? Tell me, why did you move, and how? easy was it for you to get your head around moving oh, i mean it's it's very very easy a lot of people as you said make it so much bigger than it actually is i mean it's just a decision and then you put everything into place to leave i mean i don't have a family or any kind of attachment so it's much easier to just get up and leave but we both know so many families that have made it work all you, all you need to do is a plan pack your cases and off you go uh, I mean, I wanted to move here, combination of Be lifestyle. closer to me, probably. Be yeah, closer obviously. to me. <laughs> combination of lifestyle uh, and opportunities, really. I mean, there's the best of both worlds out here. You've got the, the, the sun, 360 three days a year, the two I was here last year, <laughs> or earlier this year, should I say. It's fake rain um, here, isn't it? It is fake rain, but when you're caught in it, it's not It's not pleasant. <laughs> I got caught in it twice this year. So um, yeah, combination of lifestyle, sun, and just the business opportunities out here are, are, are just un- unmatchable. Anywhere, anywhere I've been to, that there's that the mindset and, and the opportunities out here are just ridiculous. So this is the place to be for business. Yeah, I mean the business opportunities they are just wild. You know, whatever sector you're in, and I mean, look, in, in the week that we've been back here, the you know the two or three meetings that we've been to together, you've you've, you've done your own bits, I've done my own bits, and that you know, it's, it's the kind of it's the kind of meetings and environment that you almost wouldn't get in in months if not year, years in the UK and I don't know it, it, it feels it feels so much easier to achieve them here as well I think you know as well as the opportunities being here the mindset or the or the attitude of people is so much more open to helping I mean like you you and I were that we a meeting the other day where um, a guy introduced us to someone who could raise some funds for us you know to, you know on paper two very credible people who've got track record of raising money I mean to go and ask for someone for that introduction back in the UK you know first of all I mean it's invoice before you even get there. well I mean I mean yeah you, you you're not getting the introduction if you are you're getting it after promising to pay a massive commission out to uh, you know to, to, to someone who's going to want to get involved in the deal and you know cut their own piece of the action and that's not me trying to be tight and saying that someone doesn't deserve a piece of the action but you know here everybody is like I just want to help you. If it makes some money, great. Maybe pay me, or or do pay me, but just tell me about it afterwards. Or just 
I'm going to help you because at some point in the future, you know, you're going to scratch my back too. And I think that just uh, you know, applies to this fundraising is what we're doing. But uh, you know, every, every industry there's just you know there's just the biggest and the best and the most and the most opportunities out here. So yeah, I think what they've done here is what what they've got right is it's expensive to live here, but you it comes with all the benefits like no tax, etc. So somebody that's coming here has worked for something, has something to kind of not pay tax on if you like. They're earning a good good money they've got a good business or they can work remotely if if their job is in the UK but still be able to maintain that lifestyle here that you probably couldn't in the UK whether it's tax or, or circumstances so the, the caliber of people here are just so is so much higher and you're around you're surrounded by like-minded people and that have the right mindset of wanted to achieve success here but also have it have a nice life I think it's important as well though for people listening to this not to you know to confuse let's say high caliber and like-minded because again, it's, it's very easy for people to think that uh, you know only super wealthy people you know can can come to Dubai and can and can exist in Dubai and you know my I've got a very varied circle of friends from you know from super wealthy business people to active pe- business people to retired business people to to employees to massage therapists to personal trainers and and, and, and everything in, in between and all of those people are obviously all on very different different uh, you know different financial circumstances but what they've all found it in themselves to do is to move here and every one of them tells the same story that you know well, moving here is easy it was you know one person just said well it's a matter of picking up a suitcase the other person might be picking up a fleet of Louis Vuitton trunks but you know either way you just move here and if you want to move back you can you can you can move back but you know all of those people just have such a you know just such a such a happier mindset here yeah i mean i the real estate agent that i used to to find my flat um he he was a teacher back in the uk and he's come here and he's he's now on probably if if not six figures then then very high five figures from from kind of nothing i mean the teacher's uh salary in the uk is 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 ridiculous for what they do and he, he's come here with the kind of opportunity no real experience did his, did his broker's license and and he's he's kind of in a year and a half that he's been here he's made massive success because the, the country kind of gives you the opportunity to be able to do that and go after what you want well look we've done we've done the pr for dubai for long enough <laughs> um, I, i'm still new to that though I, know, I, I, I can do it. I can justify. <laughs> I'm here. I still feel find myself doing it, but uh, let's let's talk about work. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Louise is very worried about what we can talk about because she, she she thinks that all the good things can't be aired. I uh, says that me and her no, are probably good. Interesting. Have, <laughs> probably got wildly differing views of uh, of what can and can't be aired. And I think we all know Come I don't on. don't have much of a filter. Go for it. Go for it for me. Well, listen. I mean, obviously, the thing I I can't help but talk about mm. is is the work from home scenario, mm. which uh, you know seems to seems to rear its head, you know, time and time again. I mean, yeah. Again, for for, for, for context, you know, we have a London office, we have a Leeds office, and you know, a, a recent new recruit of the London office came to a London-based job, and a month into it, and they're doing a great job, by the way. But a month into it want to now start working from home and it's opened a whole set of questions for us about well do we let them work from home and if we do then what does that mean mean to everybody else so it's been a it's been a debate between you and I for the last couple of days hasn't it <laughs> yeah it has been I mean I don't I'm not a fan of working from home to make that very very clear I prefer office-based work just the same way that <coughs> I prefer working in the office and I just don't think you can beat that office environment but I do think that there's certain individuals and certain jobs that can be done effectively from home uh, or not necessarily from home all the time but a hybrid model potentially yeah i mean look, I, d- I mean a few different things i mean I, I often get comments you know from people say well you know you're very very hippish critical saying that you know you don't like work from home when uh, you know when you're saying these comments whilst you're working from home but i do think there's two sides to that you know one is as a, as a business owner, I know that I will put in as much or as little effort as I need to to do, you know, to like, I write my own checks. So I'm not worried about how much I'm not doing because if I'm not doing it, it's only me that I'm that, that's, that's suffering. So there is that element of control. But the other side is, 
I don't want I don't want to work from home. I, I want I want to work in an office. It just happens that we just need to find one. <laughs> yeah, we just need, need to find one here. It just happens that you know I moved to Dubai by accident and you know for, for, for lifestyle circumstances, and that has taken me away from the office. And I'm always the first to say that I am. Um, I don't know what the number is. Let's be opt optimistic and say twenty percent less productive than I would be in an office environment. And I think you know if that's me saying that as you know the probably the most well, hopefully the most motivated person in any one of my businesses. If I can't perform as well by not being in the office, and you know what chance has somebody else who isn't as emotionally or financially invested in it as me? So that's I mean that's one big point. But but the real gripe for me is is people changing their mind. You know, I mean, yeah. I just don't think the, you know, if someone, if someone sets a stall out, fine, that's one thing, but I don't think it is an employee's right to dictate to their employer whether or not they want to work from home, you know, I mean, what, how, ultimately it's a material change in contract and how is somebody saying that, you know, what, I now fancy working from home and you've got to let me, it's really no different to saying, you know what, I don't, uh, I don't want to earn 40 grand a year anymore. I think you should pay me 50. Mm -hmm. Start paying oh, me 50. That's one of my topics actually. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the same way that, you know, how could I turn around to an employer and go, I don't fancy paying you 50 anymore. I'm going to start paying you 40. I think it, it just, if you, you want to have another lawsuit <laughs> on your door. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think if you want to, if, if an employee wants to work from home, that's entirely up to them. And, and I get it. It, it does suit, suit, suit some people's lives. Uh, and I know a lot of employers, you know, it's, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy that, you know, as employers, we think that we have to give it. Therefore, we're probably all, gi all giving it as an option. And that means that people get the ability to work from home. But I do strongly, strongly believe, and I've been saying it for 12 months, and I don't know how long it's going to be, but it, I think we're getting closer and closer. When the carnage happens in the employment market, which will happen, and, you know, we talk about recessions, we talk about, uh, you know, mass layoffs and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and we haven't even seen the beginning, and we haven't even seen the beginning of the pain that's going to come. And when that comes, these people now who are swanning around, you know, d d d demanding special treatment and, and work from home, whatever it is, they'll be begging for a job. They'll be happy to chain themselves to the, uh, to, the to the office doors and, and sleep there when, uh, when, when it comes. And uh, it's... It's hard because when you're trying to employ people now, you know, you, you feel like you've got to make these concessions. But like I said to Steph on the phone today after, after, after you and I had spoken, you know, we've got an office in Leeds and an office in London. I don't know the numbers, but I would assume that at least 500,000 people come into Leeds city centre every day to go to work and at least 4 million people go into London city centre every day to go to work. And we need two of them. You know, <laughs> I mean, if, if we can't find two good people out of that pool, then it's ultimately down to our inability to recruit as opposed to uh, as opposed to the fact that everybody else wants to uh, want, you know, demand to work from home yeah hmm. <laughs> let's leave that one here <laughs> <laughs> so what were you, what were you gonna you were gonna say something about money I was gonna say should people be asking for pay rises or should employers be given the pay rises um I think if you're going to do a good job as an employer you should probably be ahead of the curve offering it i think i mean listen I, i'm i'm talking i'm talking from let's say what i think is the right thing as opposed to being a world expert in this because i don't pretend to be a, a great employer nor, nor nor a great manager uh, and i'm still very much learning on the job with that but i do think you know i've got it wrong for many years in terms of in terms of culture, in terms of recruitment, and in terms of retention. But if you asked me, I think the, the common sense answer would be there should be a, a clear plan in place for for progression. I mean, I guess we all know that we should have progression plans in place, whether that's our own progression or the progression of the people in our team. And progression isn't just, isn't just a title, isn't just a, a growth as a human being. I guess it's growth in money. So I think, you know, there should be a, a path for for people's pay rise but then another part of that i think is don't ask you don't get well no so if you don't ask you don't get so i think but, but i think if someone has to ask i'm trying to I'm, i like my analogies and i'm trying to think i'm trying <laughs> to think of a an analogy in in home life and i guess i'm sure it's the you know the the same with parents and kids or husbands and wives that you know do you offer the right thing when it's the right time to offer it or or do you you know, wait for them to ask. And I think, you know, ultimately you want to do as much as possible to ease friction in any circumstances, don't you? And I guess if if times move, 
there's two different circumstances, I think, for an employer, right? Look, if time's moved on and and, and inflation's kicked in and cost, cost of living, et cetera, has gone up, then obviously it's an issue for your staff. But if you if you're taking some new staff on and you're paying them a higher price because you have to because of mark because of market sentiment, then I think it's only fair. Well, it's not, I mean, it's obviously only fair that you then readjust everybody else to the same people that you're recruiting. I mean, how could you have five people in a team, all identical people earning 30 grand, need to recruit a sixth person? Market rate says it's now 34 grand and you can't recruit that person for less than 34. How can you put them in the team and not then bring everyone else's pay rise up? So that, that's one issue. But I guess if you're not taking on new people, and you can't afford to pay them anymore, then then that's a that's a, a personal question to the employer and you know employer I think. But um, why? Well, what's what, what's what's your thoughts? No, well, it wasn't a thought. It's just uh, following the conversation we had earlier this week. It's just kind of been in my mind in terms of our staff, I guess, and employees. When's the right time to do it? And do you want to be waiting for them to ask? Because it's a very different conversation there. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think I think when you when you go and offer, yeah, well, as well, I don't even think it should be that you're going to offer. I think it should be very clear when the conversation happens. It shouldn't just be, oh, Matt and Louise have woken up in a good mood. Let's go and sit everybody down and give them give them all a bonus. It should be no, 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 that obviously this related is, to the task. Well, to the either, job. well, either related to well, yes, related to the job, but the time that you have the conversation should probably be clearly set, you know, clearly set out from the beginning as well. That you know, whether that's monthly, quarterly, biannually, annual reviews, you know, there is a conversation because I think you know, the bigger the organisation, the more these systems need need to be in, in in place. When there's two or three of you, it probably doesn't really matter. But I think if if you're doing a pay rise, they need to be company wide pay rises at that at that point because otherwise it's just yeah you know, it's just more chance for problems. And anyone who thinks that staff don't talk is you know d- is deluded. They do. <laughs> they don't talk. They don't As talk to us, but no, they talk to each they other. They talk to each other. <laughs> Another interesting one, which uh, I'd, I'd written down after I read your newsletter this mm-hmm. morning, which is uh, my new PT, who's been very insightful in lots of the things he said in the last week that I've been training with him, said that um, a few months ago he went through a process of firing friends. Yeah. <laughs> because they didn't uh, enjoy the same lifestyle where he, as he did. And I saw that you agreed quite a lot in your newsletter earlier today. So I guess my my thoughts or question is, why is that the case? Why, why should you can, fire friends? Yeah. Can you not coexist or, or be friendly with people that are... Yeah, I, I, I think I mean, maybe we use the words, you know, like fire for whether it's you know garnering attention and you know on social media or 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 trying to sound sexy when you're talking about something i mean i mean i I wasn't particularly making reference to a you know to a mass slaying session of you know (laughs) friends and family members but i think it's important to realize that you know as you grow and this is this applies to you personally you in business you know to your business with a a supplier relationship anything as, as as people grow and evolve, uh, they're not necessarily going to going to have the same same relationships and same values as people as time goes on. So I guess if you want to get to a certain place, you need to be associating yourself with people who are who are already in that space or on that on that journey with you. Now, yeah, I think I think stage one is just that you'll probably naturally drift apart, or you know. But I think you, I think you can you're only going to be able to coexist if you're both appreciative of of each other's different circumstances now and values. And the reality is, the, I guess the reality is you just wouldn't coexist. You don't have to be aggressive and angry about it. But, you know, it's like saying, if you want to, if, if we're together, you know, it's the same boyfriend and girlfriend. If me and you were together and you decide you want to move back to Greece tomorrow and I want to stay in Dubai, well, can we, we can't coexist. I mean, we don't have to have a big fight about it, but, you know, we just, we can't coexist because you now want a Greek life and I, I, I want to, I want to keep keep a Dubai life. So I think there'll be just natural, you know, non-aggressive evolution as time goes on. But some people will need firing if they are, let's say, being a positive, negative force to you. You know, it's, it's one it's one thing not being the right person 
to have around you to help you move forward but it's a completely different thing having someone hold it actually holding you back I think, those, I think that, that's people. the difference the holding you back rather than not necessarily taking you forward difference um i think that the first is is a problem and that's where you shouldn't be coexisting with those people but um yeah the second i don't think is harmful it's just not necessarily beneficial but i, I think you know if someone is a is a true friend they will see where you where you're wanting to go anyway and like you know that's that's the that's probably like the the, co, the coexisting bit that you know me and you are friends and you know and it's, it's the same same with relationships if if you're with someone and somebody wants to go in a particular life path you know you you're not doing them justice or doing them service by trying to talk them out of it out of it for your, for your own for your own benefit. Um, okay. So yeah, I think uh, it's, yeah, it's the same. You know, I mean, I I've got a couple of people that you know I do business with. You know, particularly so some one one of our investors, and you know, over the last six months, and we've I've dealt with them for years, and over the last six months, we've been having quite a few arguments over why they will or won't do something and you know i always like to blame myself for everything and then it's easy to you know it's, it's easy to look back and say what can i change to make it to make it go you know to make it be different and i think these particular people they're you know i'm saying well why not this why not that i think you know the reality is if i take a step back it's just that their business has changed you know when we were doing business in a particular manner years ago it suited because their business was what it was and over time you know they've evolved and we've evolved and that just means we can't do the same things that we used to do years ago. It doesn't mean we need to fall out or you know, I need to argue with them every time. I just need to accept. Oh, well, you could. <laughs> well, I could do, but it's not, it's not, it's not going to achieve anything. Um, and sure. you've got to accept that uh, you're in different places, but uh, who knows what's around the corner next month or next year. And uh, that's why I guess uh, it's best never to burn any bridges. 100%. Great. <laughs> I was at a kind of a mastermind thing on the on the palm in a, in a villa earlier today mm -hmm. where um, a lady who was hosting this other ladies mastermind of, of different UK businesses uh, wanted me to come and talk to them and you know do a do a bit of a QA and a on things and um, you know when, whenever there's these women in business type questions you know it, uh, sorry women in business type scenarios it always I guess it brings up that that female that female in business type thing you know I, I always I always get asked asked the question about it because um, you know often people will say well you know let's talk about women in business because you know you, you've you've you know what it's like to to hire women or you know why you should hire women for cert certain key positions because you've done it and I always say well I've never actually hired a woman ever I've, I've, I've hired a person and you know and, and, it happens to be and it just it just <laughs> happens to be a woman but I guess you know not only are you a woman you're a young young person so a young woman and you know age and sex are two two key things that get to, they get talked about for for discrimination purposes in business and uh, I mean I as you well know, I can't be doing with any kind of discrimination conversation because I think I think any kind of positive discrimination, i.e., you know, let's employ more black people, let's employ more disabled people, let's employ more women, it's all fucking bollocks because because it's completely going against the grain of employing the best people. You know, if you just have a policy to employ the right people, you will naturally end up with a selection of male, female, old, young, black, white, pink, you know, one leg, whatever. But uh, I think, yeah, trying to push you know push a, a particular demographic it ultimately achieves achieves the opposite opposite of what it should do but uh, i mean yeah what what experiences have you had as a you know as a young female in a in a let's say a very old male industry <laughs> i get asked this a lot and i never know the right way to answer it because Whatever I say, I'm going to offend somebody. But my true, offend somebody. My, true, <laughs> my true belief is that it hasn't fundamentally made any difference to where I would have been. That That's what I believe. Now, I may be lucky. It may, be, it may have been circumstances, but I was given opportunity to start off from older males. I got trained by older males. I pitched in front of older males i've done lots of different things and the result has always kind of been what i wanted because i worked hard and, and try to get there where i can see a difference and, and where people can see i guess the discrimination element is 
when they first come in and automatically they badge you as incapable because you're young and female and that could happen with young males I guess and it can happen with older women but having both of those qualities sometimes day one and uh, minute one I guess of any meeting or event it's it's you're starting from minus you're not starting from zero and that's fact it's it doesn't apply to everybody but, but do you not is. think that if the person like I said people may have prejudices but unless it's a very prejudicial person to the point that they're going to be the cause of their own downfall from their prejudices that you get over it quickly yeah. you know because like like you know i would be lying if i said i it's just natural when, when a, for example when a young person you know comes yeah. in that you think oh inexperienced i mean I, you know even though i was once that young person and yeah. you know, I, you I, you know I, yeah i still think it now you know naturally if, if a 24 25 year old person comes to talk to me about something very senior i'm naturally going to be taken aback but as soon as they start to impress me in a conversation then it's Gone. it's out yeah. the window and that's and, i think what I, what I was going to say is that it's only that beginning part that you get that and i think age is probably more to do with it than than the fact that i'm female but i've never had a situation where 15 minutes into a conversation that hasn't changed uh, and it and, and it hasn't changed throughout the relationships with with those people whether it's work or, or anything so yes you might get that initial kind of prejudice situation but it, it doesn't last for long and as long as as you do work, work hard and know what you're talking about then they're not going to care whether you're a woman well or i think that's the right thing the right thing as well that you've got to concentrate on the on the bits where where you're adding value on, on what you're there for and i think the people that complain about discrimination uh, it ultimately it's probably a self-fulfilling prophecy because like you say 15 minutes into the meeting if you've done a good job of presenting yourself then it's going to be forgotten about. and let's listen if you sat against if you sat opposite a total dickhead then fine there's not yeah, there's that, nothing but that's there's his not, problem th not yours. exactly and they are they are the vast minority you know not 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 the majority anyone with a prejudice who's got half a brain will get over that prejudice very yeah. very, very quickly and i think you know that the people that you know have spent years crying about how there are a woman who's not been able to climb the corporate ladder or a, you know a, a minority group that's not been able to do something i think if they've spent more time actually doing being job. good and doing the job and less time fucking moaning they might be telling a, a very different story i mean i had you know i had um, a, uh, a footballer on on a podcast recently black guy and we were talking about uh, talking about racism in sports and he was telling me that he uh, that, that basically black guys uh, as football managers w will not get the the FA or whoever it is don't want to employ black guys as football managers. I mean, I think it's a, quite a sweeping comment, but and that, that because of that, still now, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, no, 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 like right now, and that because of that, they therefore don't do their coaching don't do their training and stuff because what's what's the point because they're not going to get the job anyway i'm saying well okay listen i'm not you know it's always a sensitive subject to talk about race or sex or whatever whatever with anyone but i think as a concept you're not doing yourself any favors i mean if if if, if all all the black guys get together <laughs> and say well we're not going to you know because people won't hire us we're not going to go and do the qualifications necessary for them to hire us of course you're never going to get fucking hired mm -hmm. you know and uh, it's the same you know, whether it's women whether it's whether it's race whether it's whatever you know concentrate on being the best and ultimately you will rise to the top yes there'll be someone that doesn't like you there'll be someone that wants to hold you back you get that with but, any but even if you're a, yeah even if you're a, a great looking perfectly aged white man there's going to be someone who doesn't like you and, and, and wants to and wants to hold you back that being said the worst relationships in business i've had have been with women <laughs> yeah I'm, trying, I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking i don't know you know other than that woman in question i i, I can't think I've, of it. i've had a few um oh I don't no know i'm not arguing a... i'm just saying i'm just saying i, I haven't but... I, i'm just uh i i think it's more a women to women thing rather than women in general if that makes sense so you get all these women hormone day find, find, i know <laughs> if only we could sink <laughs> um i think a lot of the women come at it with like a very a feminist kind of point of view and yes i'm all for women in business but once they see one doing better than the other that they don't like that and i think women in general are more emotional in business than than men are a bit more cut through again 
there, there's there's exemptions to every rule, but I think it's a good job you're a woman saying that. I'd be getting that. I'd be getting hate if I'd I said know, that as I'll a man. I'll probably get hate. <laughs> that's that's my view. Yeah, and I, I think that the emotions that are brought into it are, cause more drama than necessary, which just takes out time for productivity and efficiency and all those things that we need. <laughs> Anything else that's worth talking about before we wrap up? No, I think no? that's it for this okay. week. A good practice. <laughs> was it as daunting as you thought? No, I thought it was going to be much worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're back after 18 months and we're going to be back next week and next week and next week. Hopefully I'll be able to drag Louisa along along with me again. So please, like I say, drop a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Send me an email, send me a comment on social media, what you've liked that we've talked about, what you don't like, any of your questions or problems in your own businesses and we can uh, answer those and dig deep next week. So yeah. <laughs> Louisa the Agony Ant <laughs> alright guys thanks a lot for listening <laughs>